The Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation brings you Crime Photographer. Say, Ethelbert, what's today's date? It's the 17th, Casey. How do you know? Because tomorrow's the 18th. It's a famous day. What do you mean, a famous day? It's the anniversary of the famous ride of Paul Revere. Did I hear somebody say famous? Why, I was just going to talk about something famous. Is that so? Sure. Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tony Marvin. Every week at this time, the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, and its more than 10,000 employees bring you another adventure of Casey, crime photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Written by Alonzo Dean Cole, our adventure for tonight, Box of Death. Three o'clock in the morning, a darkened street, deserted, except for a uniformed policeman languidly making his lonely round. In the middle of the sidewalk, he sees a large wooden packing case. He stops, reads a stenciled inscription on it, and then angrily enters an apartment building and rings a doorbell marked Superintendent. Is... is that you at the door, Fred? This is a policeman. Policeman? Yes, open up. Just a minute. What is it, officer? Does uh, Mrs. George Donald live here? What? I'm Mrs. Donald. You you haven't brought me bad news. I'm giving you a summons for blocking the sidewalk with that big box out there. Big box? A wooden packing case. Someone will break his neck on it. But I don't know anything about a wooden box. It's got your name on it. Come and see. Okay. You know, for a moment I, I was afraid you were here about my husband. Why should I be here about your husband? He hasn't come home tonight. I, I've been waiting for him. Huh. He must be an awful chump to stay out when he's got a wife as young and good-looking as you are. Uh, he doesn't usually stay out. Say, the, uh, the super of this house is named Swanson. What are you and your husband doing in this apartment? Well, Mr. Swanson has rented us a room in his apartment until we can get a place of our own. Well, the old housing shortage, huh? Yeah. Well, there's the box, Mrs. Donald. See, it's got your name and address on it. But... Uh... I haven't the slightest idea what's in it or who left it here. This sounds awful screwy to me. Yes, it does to me, too. Uh, Officer, open it and see what's inside. Yeah, maybe I'd better. (coughs) The thing's heavy as it looks. The lid is loose, just tied down with ropes. Cut the rope, officer. Cut it. Okay, but what are you acting scared about? I don't know, but cut that rope quick. Now, lift the lid. Sure. Holy! A man's inside. A dead man. He's been shot through the head. It's Fred. My husband. Fred! (laughs) Well, then, Captain Logan, I took this girl, this Mrs. Donald, as she called herself, back here to the super's apartment where I... Got on the phone and called you homicide, Dixon. When I got through phoning, I couldn't find the girl. She'd scrammed out through a window. Now, letting an important murder witness get away isn't going to help your record, Costello. Wait a minute. Don't blame the cop, Logan. He had no reason to figure the gal would take a powder. When I want your advice, Casey, I'll ask for it. Uh, Oh, okay, pal. She isn't such an important witness, Captain. There's hardly a thing that she could tell you that we don't already know. And you keep out of this, Miss Williams. What did you just say? (laughs) Hmm. Annie remarked that we could tell you a few things, pal. You? Mm Mm-hmm. Costello. Yes, sir? Report to your precinct station and stay on call for further orders from me. Yes, sir. And next time you meet a woman who identifies herself as Mrs. George something or other and then refers to her husband as Fred, you get suspicious and hang on to her no matter how good-looking she is. Yes, sir. Now get out of here. Yes, sir. Now, Casey, give. And you too, Miss Williams. Oh, you're... 
asking for our advice? I'm demanding whatever information you have. Well, he's entitled to it, Casey. Yes, he really is, Annie, but at times he has such bad manners. Will you cut the comedy? I'm in no mood for it. Okay, well, in the first place, according to the witnesses, Mrs. George Donald could have had no part in the murder of her husband. I know that. Now, wait a minute. She was too crazy about the guy she married to do him any harm. How do you know that? Because we recognize the dead man in that box. It was Fred Lister. Who and what was Fred Lister? He was a small-time crook, Logan. Never mixed up with anything big enough to bring him in contact with you homicide guys. While he was alive, that is. Up to a couple of months ago, he was a kind of an errand boy for Lucky Carson. Well, I've come in contact with Lucky Carson plenty of times. Mm, not close enough to pin anything on him. Now, yeah, go on. Tell me about this Fred Lister. Well, he had the good taste and the bad judgment to fall for a gal that his boss liked. Lucky? Yeah. A gal named Ella Hagen. Hat check girl at the Silver Derby Club. Both Ann and I knew her. She's a nice kid. And Fred Lister became a nice guy after he met her. He left the mob, got an honest job, and he and Ella were married. Casey was told that Lucky Carson was pretty sore about the whole thing. Oh. I was also told that Fred and Ella had been tipped off, that they'd better pull a fade out. Well, apparently they took the tip seriously. They were living in this joint under an assumed name. But they know. didn't hide well enough when they did their fade out. You two think this Fred Lister was killed at Lucky Carson's order? That's yeah. right. This job is just the sort that lousy rat would pull on a gal who'd thrown him down for another guy. Yeah, I'll issue a pickup order for Lucky Carson right away. Mm, then what? I will we'll try to get something on him. Optimist, aren't you? That rat can't get away with murder forever, Casey. Come on, we'll go to headquarters and wait for him to be brought in. <laughs> I don't know why you're always picking on me, Captain Logan. It's time you go wise to yourselves and lead off. I'll lay off after I'm able to prove something, Lucky, and you're out of circulation for keeps. That statement implies the malicious persecution of my client, Captain Logan. You keep out of this, Webster. Uh, and that's another thing. Of course, it was mere coincidence that your lawyer was with you when my men picked you up this morning. Sure. Purely coincidental, Captain. I happen to be spending the night at Mr. Carson's apartment. And three others of my mob, uh, my business associates, was with us. Someday you'll slip up on one of those phony alibis. You should realize that, Webster, and stop playing with trouble. You've got more brains than Lucky and his kind. Who says Webster has more brains than me? You heard me say it, didn't you? I... <laughs> He's trying to get you sore, Lucky. <laughs> now, don't fall for it. Now, since you haven't a thing on my client, we'll be leaving here, Captain. So long, Captain. Ah, poor Fred Lister was a nice punk. I'll be sending a swell hunk of flowers to his funeral, and I hope you get whoever bumped them off. Only I doubt of you will. Don't be too sure. <laughs> okay. So long, Casey <coughs> and Miss Williams. How lucky. Yeah. Say, what's that thing on your watch chain? You've been rubbing your fingers over it ever since you came in here. It's my luck piece, Casey. Your luck piece? Yeah. It's just an old Indian head penny with a hole board in it. But I wouldn't sell it for a hundred grand. <laughs> I found it on the street one day when I was a punk. It's brought me luck ever since. Look at me now. Yeah, Lucky thinks it's a reason for his success. Well, for a long time now, I ain't been able to hire and fire brainy guys like you. And I mean I have. Well, I wasn't saying that you weren't right about it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Open the door. Oh, sure, sure, Lucky. Sure. Get smart, Captain. Lay off me from now on. Get out of here, both of you. <laughs> so long. Those lousy rats. And there isn't a thing I can do to them. That lawyer Webster's really worse than Lucky because he knows more. Uh -huh. Lucky doesn't like anyone to say that, Annie. Mm, I noticed that. I never knew about that Indian head penny before. Well, nearly all crooks carry something they think brings them luck. <laughs> doesn't look as though you'll pin Fred Lister's murder on Lucky, Captain. No. From where we sit now, Miss Williams, there isn't a chance. Mm, I don't agree with that, Logan. Hmm? Why not? I'm going to have a talk with Fred Lister's wife. With Lister's wife? Yeah. I think I can find Ella. Through a close friend of hers, Annie. Well, why haven't you said so before? You know I want to question that ah, gal. Questioning her won't get you anywhere, Logan. I want to tell her a few things. Ruth Judson had no right to tell you I was hiding here in her apartment, Casey. She knew I wanted to help you, Ella. Nobody can help me. Fred's gone. I, I loved him, Casey. Now he's gone. Yeah, you've, you've had a rotten break, kid. I guess you've got an idea who killed him. I know who killed him. 
Mm. Lucky Carson. Yes. When you skipped out on that cop this morning, I figured you wanted to pay Lucky off uh, personally, right? That's my business. Mm. You know, Ella, murder is murder, even if it happens to be Lucky Carson. I have a plan to pay him off. I think I have a better plan to pay him off than you have. What do you mean? Well, Lucky considers himself quite a guy. He wouldn't be too much surprised if you paid him a visit, a, a social one. He's got a big yen for you. Talk straight. All right, Ella, I will. But don't tell me my idea is crazy until you've thought it over. Now, here's what I want you to do. Not all glass is alike. In fact, there are almost as many different kinds of glass as there are flowers in your garden. Some glass is produced for fragile beauty, others for sturdiness. And Anchor Hocking, the world's largest maker of household glass, produces glass of all kinds. The particular glass we're going to talk to you about tonight is Fire King Oven Glass, which combines beauty and sturdiness to an unbelievable degree. Now, you use Fire King Oven Glass for baking and for serving. It's so impervious to heat that it's guaranteed for a full two years against oven breakage. And a special Fire King process makes its surfaces actually mirror smooth. Fire King Oven Glass won't absorb baking stains. It won't absorb baking odors. It comes clean miraculously. Now, big two-quart Fire King oven glass casseroles, pie plates, mixing bowls, and utility dishes of all kinds are now available at your favorite chain, variety, hardware, and department stores, all at incredibly low prices. Fire King oven glass is a product of Anchor Hocking. The most famous name in glass. did you say was to see me, Slug? Ah, uh, that Dame Ella, who was married to that punk Lister till night before last. Mm, show her in. No, okay. no, wait, Slug. What's eating you, Webster? Are you nuts, Lucky? That dame came to your apartment before her husband's even buried for just one thing. You. She knows now that I don't stand for no crossing up. And dames go for guys who taught them a lesson. Some dames don't, and this Ella... Can looks... I'm no dope. Bring her in, Slug. But don't take your eyes off her. If she pulls a phony move, you know what to do. Yeah. Okay, Lucky. You get behind that screen, Webb, and watch her. Oh, I'm not one of your bodyguards. You better be if this babe tries a fast one. You carry a rod, get back at that screen and keep it ready. Well, okay. Not that I expect any trouble. Here's the dame, boss. Hello, Lucky. Ella. This is both a surprise and a pleasure. Of course, you know about Fred. Yeah. And I'm awful sorry. I hope you didn't pay no attention to what the papers hinted, that I had something to do with his killing. They had to admit that the cops turned me loose right after they picked me up. I read the papers. Wait till you see the big floral piece I'm having sent to the undertakers for poor Freddy. It's a poily gates ajar, Ella, done in gardenias and white roses. It'll set me back over a grand. It'll show what I thought of your husband. I realize what you thought of him, Lucky. Now look here, babe. Don't try to kid me, and I won't try to kid you. I made a big mistake when I married Fred. You've proven that to me. Now I've learned my lesson, and... I... Do I have to be afraid of you, Lucky? You afraid of me? I, I had to come here today to find out. You, you won't hurt me, will you? You won't hurt me. Ella, honey, you <laughs> ought to know I would <laughs> Here, you sit down on this sofa. Put your head on my shoulder and have a good cry. There, that's right. Oh, oh Lucky, I, I've been so afraid. Ah, forget it, kid. Why, I wouldn't let no one hide a hair of your head. All I want is we should be pals. I, I consider that a, a great privilege. Yeah. How about a kiss, huh? To make it a contract? No. No, not not now. Not till after Fred is put away. Oh, I appreciate your sentiments. They show you ain't no common, Bimbo Ella. But we'll get together after the funeral, huh? For dinner here tomorrow night. Okay? Okay. I've got to go now. So soon? Well, it, it wouldn't look right if I stayed any longer now. And besides, you've 
given me what I came for. Your friendship. Thanks. The pleasure's going to be all mine. Not altogether, Lucky. So long. Show the lady out, Slug. Uh, sure thing. We're making an oily dinner, babe. Seven o'clock. As soon as you can ditch the pallbearers. You can expect me. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> you can come out now, Webb. Oh, thanks. Well, she didn't try no fast ones, did she? No, you were right. I was wrong. That's the way it usually is. The dame's gone, boss. I sure got to hand it to you. I get what I want, Slug. If not one way, I get it another. Webb. Yeah? Run over to my caterer's joint and tell him to fix up two dinners for tomorrow night. And be sure he has crepe Suzettis. They'll be appropriate for after the funeral. Get going. Oh, see here. I'm your lawyer. You're and... whatever I tell you to be. On your way. Oh. All right, as soon as I get my coat. Boy, I sure envy you, boss. It'll be nice having that cute little chick all alone. Uh, you was born lucky. No, I wasn't born that way, slug. I was always unlucky. Till one day I found this, uh... Hey. It's... It's gone. Huh? My penny. My Indian head penny. Penny? And my luck piece. Look, Fred Webb, you too, slug. Okay. It must have fallen on the floor. I know it was hanging on my watch chain just a few minutes ago. Well, I don't see it. Look, Fred, you dopes. Well, uh, yeah. I was rubbing my fingers on it for luck when Ella come in. Yeah. So I'm sure I... Ella. What's the matter now? She took it. Stole it. That dirty little double crosser. Wait till I get her with my lucky penny. Come on. We're going after her. And... Hey, look out, boss. <laughs> he tripped over that footstool. Yeah. His head hit that piano like. He's out cold. Flat on his puss. Yeah. Flat on his puss. Gee. I never knew Lucky to meet with an accident before. Hey, it's funny, ain't it? Don't let him hear you laughing when he comes to. I ain't laughing. I mean, it's funny him taking a nosedive right after he lost his lucky penny. Yes, yeah, Slug, it is funny. <laughs> Wonder what he'll think about it when he comes to. <laughs> Casey, you were telling me about sending that gal, Ella, to Lucky Carson's apartment this afternoon. Oh, yeah, for... yeah. Well, I'd nearly finished, Ethelbert. Yeah. Well, she clipped the luck piece off his watch chain, <clears throat> and I was waiting for her outside in my car, and she got in. I took her back to her hideout, and that's all there was to it. You figure losing that engine head penny's going to bother Lucky a lot? I think it'll do a lot more than bother him, Ethelbert. He's a dumb guy and a superstitious guy. The loss of that luck piece will drive him haywire. Mm-hmm. And when a crook in Lucky Carson's position doesn't watch every step he takes, well, he only has to make one mistake, Ethelbert. Yeah, which the cops will be watching for like a bunch of hawks. Captain Logan knows about your scheme, huh? Oh, sure. He's giving Ella Lister plenty of police protection, too. You've told him where she's hiding out? Naturally. Well, Lucky's pretty sure to figure that she took that penny and he'll try to get it back. Tomorrow he'll be tipped off to her hideout accidentally on purpose. And then unless I'm completely wrong, he'll make his mistake. Say, uh, what's she done with the penny, Casey? I have it. Ella hates Lucky so much she didn't want anything around that belonged to him. Let me see the thing. There it is. Yeah, it's just an old penny with a hole in it. Hmm. You think it's really Lucky? Of course not. <laughs> How could it be? Uh, luck's mostly a matter of belief, pal. Self-confidence, I guess. You got it or you haven't got it. Hmm, well, I don't know about that. I'll give you a buck for this penny, Casey. A buck? <laughs> Look, if you want the thing, I'll give it to you, Ethelbert. You will? Well, sure, it's yours, here. Yeah. Oh, gee. Yeah, but don't let Lucky Carson know you've got it. You might find yourself in a spot. Oh, I won't let nobody know I've got it, except you, of course. Okay. Well, it's, come on, Annie. It's getting kind of late. I'll drive you home. Okay, I could do with a little sleep. Yeah. Well, good night, Ethelbert. Good night, Casey. Good night, Miss Williams. Good night, Ethelbert. Where'd I leave the car, Annie? Mm, across the street, dope. Oh, yeah, I see it. Boy, I'm tired, huh? Hello, so Casey. Uh, Lucky. Uh-huh. Evening, Miss Williams. Hello. I want you two should meet one of my boys. This is Big Slug. How are you? I'm okay. You already know Webster. Yeah, nice to see you two again. So nice, we're keeping you with us for a while. You're keeping us with you. Put hands in their pockets, Annie. They've got guns on us. That's right. We're all getting into this car here. Like old friends. 
You first, Slug. Casey next. Hey, what's the big idea? We'll talk time? about that later. Get in. Okay. You too, Miss Williams. Well, I guess I haven't much choice. You haven't. You drive, Webster. I'll sit in back with Slug and our friends. Hey. No, I'm a show. Get going. Okay. Where are we going? To keep you from asking so many questions, Casey. Here. Yeah. Hit him with that gun. Give this babe the same, Slug. Sure. They're both out nice, boss. Head for the country, Webb. When we get to a dark, deserted road, I'm going to have some fun. This mug's finally coming, too, boss. You put real stuff behind that crack on the head you give him. Well, well, uh... Casey, I I thought for a while he killed you. I wouldn't do that, Miss Williams. Yet. You feel good enough to talk now, Casey? Is that talk, Lucky? Yeah. Where's my lucky penny? We don't know anything about a penny. Can it, Casey? I know you put Ella Logan up to stealing it. Lucky discovered his loss right after Ella left this afternoon. He was about to go after her when he had uh, <laughs> a little accident. Never mind about that. Accidents can happen to anybody. Oh, sure, Lucky, sure. Anyway, I had the foresight to go to a window and see Ella leave the building and get into a car. And you, Casey, were driving that car. After that, it was easy to add things up. Very easy. I know you, Casey, and I told Lucky... I'd have figured it if you hadn't told me, Webb. Casey, you had that dame steal my luck piece because you knew I'd go after it. And when I went after it, the cops were going to be around watching when I started to twist Ella's double-crossing neck. But I'm too smart for guys like you. I was waiting for you when you come out of the Blue Note Cafe. (laughs) Heh. And here you are. Now, where's my penny? I don't know. No? No. You'd better come clean. You've already searched him. You know he hasn't got it. He can tell me where it is and how to get it. I think... I mean, Lucky thinks that Ella wouldn't keep anything to belong to him because, uh, well, for some unaccountable reason, she doesn't like him. That's right, Webb. Hey, this is a nice, lonely spot. Stop the car. Okay, Casey, I'm going to make you tell me where and how to get back my luck piece. Pull him out of the car, Slug. Come on, guy. Come on. Casey, they'll torture you. I got I got. No, to... no. Keep quiet, Ann. Big Slug here will break every bone in your body, Casey. Slowly. If you don't I come... can't tell you anything I don't know. Big Slug's an awful sap if he does anything for a boss who's lost his luck. Go to work on him, Slug. Wait. Listen to me, Slug. And you too, Webster. You guys have got brains... You taking orders from this dumbbell? Orders that may land you in the hot seat all because he's lost the penny? Hit him, Slug. Hit him. No, don't hit him. Webster. Sure, Casey. Webb and me are listening. Slug. I knew you guys had sense. This jerk you worked for is washed up. All he ever had to keep him on top was a lousy copper luck piece, and he's lost it. He's sunk. He's through. That's a cockeyed lie. Slug and Webster don't think so, Carson. You're not lucky, Carson, anymore. Cut it. They're not saps enough to go through with your plan. They know every cop in every newspaper in town would go after our murderers and keep after them until they were caught. I've stood enough of this. You can't turn my guys against me, Casey. I'll show you. <laughs> Webster. You shot him. Just as you are going to shoot Casey. Yes, Miss William. Oh. Thanks, fella. You won't regret that. I'm sure I won't, Casey. I've wanted to kill Lucky Carson for a long time. And this afternoon, Slug agreed that it was a nice idea. Yeah, a swell idea. Oh, gee, Thanks. Thanks for saving our lives. Oh, don't thank us yet, Miss Williams. <laughs> or you, Casey. Why not? Uh, tell him, Webb. You and Miss Williams would prove awkward witnesses if Slug and I were brought to trial. Remember, I'm really a lawyer. You, you... I mean to become boss of the former Lucky Carson mob. Yeah, and when your dead bodies are found close to Lucky's, why, the cops will figure he shot you and you shot him. That's right, Slug. You see, uh, Casey and Miss Williams... We're going to kill you with a gun Lucky didn't have a chance to use. And then return the gun to his dead hand. The gun I shot him with will be found close to you. (laughs) Do you get it? You shot him and he shot you. We get it. Oh, Casey. No. Don't see any way out of this one, kid. There isn't any way out. Pick up Lucky's gun slug and do the job. Oh, you thought up this swell idea, Webb. It's your right to do it. Well, I don't mind. (laughs) First, I'll put this gun that I shot Lucky with near Casey so that it will look as if he dropped it. Yeah. Just right about here. (laughs) Now, 
You keep him covered, Slug, while I get Lucky's gun. No, you don't, Webb. Slug, Slug, what goes? You're the smart guy, Webb, but I'm smarter. I'm gonna be the boss of this mine. No, don't shoot, Slug. Don't shoot. Oh, no. I... Well, he's done for him. Now, lady and Casey, I'm... Oh. Oh. Webster dropped his gun too close to me, Slug. Casey, did you, did you kill him, Casey? Did I kill him? I... I hope not, Annie. Hey, look, will you and see? I... I never shot a guy before. There are two great safeguards which protect you in buying prepared foods of any kind. One is the packer's name on the label. He spent a great deal of money in telling you about its quality because he believes in his product. He can't jeopardize for a single moment that enormous investment. The second safeguard which the Better Food Packers of America are bringing you in increasing numbers is the glass container. For the glass container lets you see exactly what you buy before you buy it. At a glance, you can judge the quality of fruits, vegetables, meats, and seafoods. And then, too, food packers know that glass won't affect taste or flavor. You can safely reseal the glass container to store leftovers. Now, it'll pay you to shop for foods packed in glass and to let your retailer know that you prefer foods packed in glass. Crystal clear, sanitary anchor glass containers, which bring you so many of the better brands of food, and the anchor vacuum caps, which protect them, are products of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. slug guy, huh, Casey? No, Ethelbert, he'll live. Until he goes to the chair for killing Webster. And Webster killed Lucky Carson. The gang's washed up. That's right. But not quite the way Mr. Casey figured on washing it up. Hmm. Well, okay, Annie, rub it in. I can take it. <laughs> but I wasn't wrong about one thing, that Indian had Penny. If I hadn't put Ella up to taking it, Lucky and his mob might still be doing business, don't forget. You were wrong about that Indian had Penny itself, though. What do you mean? Huh? Miss Williams, less than half an hour after Casey gimme that thing, I got a phone call telling me I'd won a $25 silk hat on a ticket I bought for 50 cents. Casey! Huh? Silk? <laughs> You're like my sister Edna says, quote, even a penny can go to your head. You, unquote. Crime Photographer, starring Stotts Cotsworth as Casey, is brought to you each Thursday by the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation, makers of Fire King Oven Glass, Anchor Glass Containers, Anchor Caps and Closures, all products of Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. Crime Photographer is directed by John Dietz. The original music is by Archie Blyer, and the program features Miss Jan Minor as Anne and John Gibson as Ethelbert. Herman Chittison is the Blue Note pianist. Thursday night on CBS is the biggest show in town, so stay tuned for exciting dramatizations on Reader's Digest Radio Edition, which follows immediately over most of these stations. No one is safe from cancer. It strikes young and old, rich and poor alike. Help bring this vicious killer under control. Give to the American Cancer Society's Drive for Funds. This is Tony Marvin saying good night for the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, with offices in all principal cities of the United States and Canada. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>